Hey everybody, welcome back to Taste of Victory. I'm Taste RC, and today we got a really interesting spicy deck profile for you, joined by James, who placed 29th at the official Bandai event of uh, last month out of 256 players. James, you want to go ahead and introduce yourself? Hi, my name is James. Um, got into the Digimon TCG back in November uh, with my friends because they were super interested, so I kind of dove right in and... Personally, my favorite color is yellow, but my plan is to just have everything so I can play whatever I want. Nice, so. yeah. I totally feel that. So this is going to be a really cool deck profile. He's got a really interesting uh, Ragnazoo build for us. So you want to go ahead and start going through it? Sure, absolutely. Awesome. Um, so we'll just start with the eggs, keep it simple. Mm -hmm. uh, we're playing four Upa and one QP. Uh, let me flip these around for you guys. Mm -hmm. uh, so... Uh, the Upamon comes in clutch because you're going to be taking a lot of early aggro because you're not playing blockers or anything of that nature. So you're going to get to three or less security uh, decently quick. So you're going to resolve the on-draw effects. Um, but the main reason we play these is because um, we're just playing a yellow base to try and make our deck a little bit more consistent. So a lot of a few yellow rookies and things of that nature. Uh, nothing more than that, though. We'll move on from there. All right. Then I'll start off. I'll go with the Tamers. We're just playing four TK from the booster set. Um, once again, just to help consistency, uh, grab things out of security as needed, which, since we're not playing a lot of yellow cards, uh, we don't resolve the recover effects. So um, it'll help turn on Upamon just that much faster if needed. So it really depends. Um, and we'll go with options. Two Lightning Paw. Um, I expected a lot of Rookie Rush. That's what I assumed the meta would be for this tournament, so I geared a little bit extra towards that. Mm -hmm. Four Gaia Force. Uh, I'll make some comments about this later, uh, about how it fits in this particular deck. But it's the best kill spell in the game, so why not play it? Right. And then on to the Digimon. Uh, we're playing eight rookies, four Salomon from the booster set, and four Patamon from the promo pack. Um, on deletion, if I have three or less security, I recover one. Mm -hmm. uh, it came up once or twice in the in the course course of the tournament, kind of just playing it there to get the extra draws off of your off of your Digitama. Um, Patamon's on play is if you have one or less security, you recover one. That didn't come up at all. Um, oh, that's it was, surprising. yeah, I, it, games either, if I got that far, I either lost that game or mm -hmm. I was in a winning position before I ever got that low. So, um, it can combo with another card that we play later on in the game, but it, out of all the level three yellows I could play, I just figured I'd play this for that weird niche scenario where I needed that one recovery if I was at one. Yeah. So, and then we're going to get on to the uh, level 6s, because I play no level 4s, 5s, or anything like that. So this is just straight Megazoo. Um, first thing, two Magnodermon. Um I'd probably play more in this list if I were to continue playing something like this. Mm -hmm. um, if you have 3 or less security on play, recover 2. And when attacking, you may play a level 3 Digimon from your hand, uh, which can go well with the Patamon if you're low at that point in the game. Nothing too crazy there. Uh, three high andros, um, just a cheap uh, level six to play uh, to get into your level sevens faster. Though I probably would replace this with something else, but we'll talk about that later. Um, four Volcanodromon. Again, I was expecting way more rookie rush, so mm -hmm. I wanted to go heavy against that, and this card was just. Really good. The one Rookie Rush matchup I did play, uh, I blew him out of the water every turn nice. with this card. <laughs> so, um, now we're getting into like the Ragnalord cards. We've got the Durandamons, um, Inheritable with Piercing. Once again, it's just a cheap. It costs 10 to play. Uh, most of... Uh, actually, all of my Megas are 10 costs, except for the Volcanic and the uh, Magnadramon, so... It's somewhat cheap to play, just 
it, they they come in clutch. This, the the piercing uh, was really good with Ragnar uh, Lord reboot and everything like that. So, um, and right. to follow him up, we've got the other piece of the combo, the Brow Um This one gives the inheritable of blocker. Once again, goes well with the Ragnar Lord. Uh, and to round out the Megas, uh, four Phoenix Mon. Just that, once again, cheap level six to get into play as fast as possible. Mm-hmm. Um, the reason we play more reds than we do blacks is because we are playing the following card, which I return to my friends, so right now I just have blank cards to represent, which is three uh, booster set one Omnimons. Um, so I would play way more red cards than we do black cards. Um, it was pretty solid. Mm-hmm. Uh, I wish we had... Different level sevens, I think, when set four comes, this deck changes a lot. Uh, and to go with those three Omnimons, we've got four Alter S. This card won me a lot of games. Once again, also anti Rookie Rush. Uh, so I'm, yeah. I think I'm over geared for Rookie Rush at this <laughs> yeah. point, to be honest with you. Yeah. Um, Maybe so. a little. <laughs> and then the rounded off, the Ragnar Lord, which. I'm going to be honest with you, this card is way better than I expected it to be. Yeah, I feel like um, a lot of players have felt that way since it dropped. Yeah, um, I'll, I'll, like it's really hard to answer. The fact that it reboots makes it to where they can't kill it on their turn in yeah. response to anything. Yeah. So this was just a, if I got this on the board, it was a solid body that very few decks could handle. So mm-hmm. Nice, that's um, really so that's, cool. So that pretty much rounds that out. Nice. That's a really interesting list because we've definitely been seeing some Megazoo experimenting here, but uh, not from not with the yellow base. So I know you said you took um, inspirations from Japanese lists, which I feel like a lot of the player base is doing right now. So usually yep. you see Megazoo with a red base uh, for Terraforce or with a blue base. So you have like Vmon and Jamming. What made you interested in the yellow base over those? Um, I'm very much a I try to be as consistent as possible player. Uh, kind of a habit from playing Yu-Gi-Oh for a long time. Um, so my deck choices pretty much always coincide with that. Uh, plus, yellow is honestly my favorite color, if the mat didn't say that already. Um, <laughs> nice. But I wanted that extra consistency with TK. Now, to be honest with you, after playing this event, I probably would have preferred to play the blue base because I'm a huge fan of Kaiser Nail yeah. and I think Kaiser Nail would have helped me a lot in those matchups where I needed to be able to make two plays for turn as opposed to just one play for turn which is what this deck has a problem with mm-hmm. um, yeah. yeah Kaiser other is big, such a fun card okay, yeah it's, it's 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 my favorite card uh, in this game right now uh, in, in the 1.0 format I played the blue yellow list with um, the Leomon engine and everything like that, mm-hmm. and it's easily my favorite engine. That's cool. Um, to get into some of the grittier details, yeah. um, I I think oh, actually let's let's talk about matchups just a little bit. Yeah, well, I played nice. out of my eight rounds. I played against three Shine Grays, which were obviously my hardest matchup, and. I after playing the event, I realized that I was not equipped to beat them very easily. Um, the round one I played Shine Gray, I beat that opponent, but I think that was probably lack of experience on their part and just not knowing what my deck did, so they couldn't yeah. play around it as effectively. Yeah. Um, the second Shine Gray I played was in the middle of the tournament, round five, or uh, it was either round four or five, mm-hmm. and we ended up drawing. Um, the game just drug on. Oh, we went up to game yeah. three, and uh, we went into time, and we drew. And then uh, the last shine gray player I played in round eight, and um, I beat him round uh, game one because he had no idea what my deck was doing. <laughs> yeah, uh, he adapted pretty quick in game two um, and beat me. And in game three, it was super close, but um, I just. With the way I drew, and he was he was doing very well, I just couldn't keep up. Because Shine Gray is that strong, so mm-hmm. if 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 they get three tamers out, they can kill your level sixes, and right. that was the one play you did last turn, and you don't get to really do anything else. Mm-hmm. 
So, yeah. Uh, if I were to rebuild this, I would definitely make a lot of edits to help with uh, yellow in general. Okay. Yeah, having that match of experience, what would you say is like the one main change you would prioritize right now? Um, I would make it easier to resolve Gaia Force, uh, which is why mm -hmm. I wanted to talk about this a little bit. Okay. The only way I can resolve a Gaia Force is if I have a level 6 in play. I do not play any cheaper uh, red cards. I don't play any red tamers or anything of that nature. So being able to play this card only works if I resolve a Phoenix Mon or the um, the Durandamon yeah. and the, and, or a Vakleninger Mon, which if I'm playing those cards, that's the only thing I'm doing on that turn because my turn is ending. Yeah. So I have no way to play a Digimon and resolve a Gaia Force on the same turn. And the other issue is is if I uh, Digivolve into any level 7s that aren't Ragnalord Mon, mm -hmm. I no longer have a red Digimon in play to activate Gaia Force. That's true. Um, so this was, this card is great in security, but every time I drew this card, I'll be honest, I hated it because I, mm -hmm. I'd say 80% of the time I just couldn't play it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just a brick. So, and I feel like being able to resolve this card multiple times against Shine Gray is really the only way you're going to keep them off their game enough to where you can stabilize and just make the bigger board presence. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. Because you need to, yeah, with all that um, memory you're giving them per turn, you got to keep that momentum in check too. Right. Because nine times out of ten, unless you've made a level six stick and you're just going into Ragnar Lord Mon, mm -hmm. uh, you're not doing anything else and you're giving them ten, eight. Mm -hmm. If they have Kari's out, you know, you're maxing them out on memory every turn, which is not good for you. Right. Yeah. That's huge. Okay, cool. So what would you say would be the easiest matchup for this deck going into tournaments? 100% uh, Rookie Rush. I Yeah, you're very good unless for you just, <laughs> Unless you just don't see your Alter S's or your Volcanics or even a Lightning Paw, mm -hmm. um, and they're, they drew a very nice hand and they're rushing you early, mm -hmm. I think you win that matchup probably 80% of the time minimum. Mm -hmm. Um it's just, uh, and that's what I geared for. I, I assumed that I would see Rookie Rush four rounds out of the eight because I just figured it would be that popular, especially with product a little bit harder to get, so I assumed people would be going for cheaper decks. Um, that was not the case. I played against one Rookie Rush player out of the eight rounds. Oh, that's unfortunate, especially with the uh, person winning it was a Rookie Rush player. So it sounds like... Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> Yeah, it just didn't get paired up well, it sounds like. Probably going it, it forward happens. in tournaments, I feel now after that win, it'll be a lot more common. Yeah, yeah. I, I have a feeling that Digimon's meta is going to be very similar to uh, Magic and Pokemon, where typically it's not always just one deck. It's more of, this deck won this event, so I'm going to play this deck to beat that deck, and then it's just going to be a, a loop cycle there. Yeah, I definitely think that too. I can agree with that. Okay. All right. So one of the most unique cards uh, that I saw you run in this deck, you said uh, you actually didn't end up seeing much use for it. That was the uh, yellow Padamon that recovers at uh, one security or less. Uh, how? What would you replace with that if you were to take it out then, since you didn't see it perform too well? Uh, if I was keeping the yellow base, mm -hmm. I would probably put in... Let me think here. Just trying to think of all the cards in my head. But the problem is there's not a, little, a lot of yellow rookies that just do something on the field. Most of them either are inheritables like Labra and the other Patamon from the booster set. Right. So, uh, I guess maybe uh, uh, Kudamon, mm -hmm. um, the level 3 that says on attack if you have 3 or less cards in hand you can draw a card. It yeah. probably wouldn't be horrible. Um, it just really depends on the situation at hand. Right. Um, I, just to be candid, I don't think I would p continue forward with a yellow base in this deck, even though I do enjoy it. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I would move... I think I would move towards um, either the blue or the red, honestly, uh, just because I want to be able to resolve Gaia Force 
more often. I would just forego the extra consistency with TK mm -hmm. um, for better options of removing threats for cheaper. Yeah. Uh, because I don't think Glorious Burst fits in this deck, mainly because even though you do play the four TKs and you can make it cheaper, um, it doesn't destroy everything in the game, and it doesn't work in security. So right. I just didn't think it was worth playing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it seems like this um, yellow base prioritizes like uh, stay safety and then um, consistency, like you said, and a red base would be more aggressive and similar to right. a blue base. Okay. It's, yeah. um, and other another thing I would change uh, in this per if like if you were to continue with the yellow base and what have you, yeah, uh, I would on I would honestly swap um, high Andromon for either Machine Dramon mm -hmm. or even um, Gray uh, War Greymon in black, uh, just for they cost a little bit more to play, but I think the utility that they provide outweighs the need for a cheaper on play yeah. in my opinion yeah it's a very uh, good on play effect for sure and the main reason i chose not to play those cards is i didn't i don't have them uh, i ordered a case of 1.0 but it got delayed oh. so i'm kind of uh yeah I, I got delayed until june so i'm kind of when i built this deck it, i took the inspiration from japan um they actually weren't playing those cards but after seeing playing the event i feel like they would have been more useful than just the vanilla in, uh, so, yeah, definitely. Okay, thanks for your time, James. That was a really interesting uh, deck to see. I, it was really cool to hear your uh, experiences in the tournament and get those uh, thoughts on the uh, deck building. So, thanks so much for uh, having uh, coming on the channel and letting sharing that with us. Yeah, sure, no problem. That's awesome. I hope to see you in future tournaments, and uh, love to have you back on sometime. Hey, if I if I do well, I, it'd be cool. So <laughs> okay. I appreciate it.